Welcome everyone to episode 54 of Ultimate Gamer Podcast. I'm joined with Andy. Yellow. And Kevin. Hello. Kevin sounds sexy. You want to know why? New mic. Gee. Yes. I got a new mic. The Congratulations. Uh, blue snowball. So. Blue balls? <laughs> Don't talk about John that way. What's so funny? I Thanks. give people blue balls, apparently. That sounds really stupid. That is, yeah, that is an image I can do without. On the gay <laughs> scale, that was a, a nine. <laughs> that was a little bit above Elton John, but still <laughs> below, uh, what is it, uh, Pavarotti or <laughs> Salvador Dali or something. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so we had a hiatus from last week and the week before that. Week before that. Ah, uh-uh, no, no, you- we didn't have a hiatus. This bitch just didn't want to do the episode. No, 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 no. <laughs> there is an we, episode. No, 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 we did record an episode 54. It just never, never came to light, okay? It's it kind got of lost like, in a black hole. It, it, well, it kind of got lost just like all those millions of copies of E.T. Look at that segue. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, okay, admit, so. That's actually a pretty awesome segue. <laughs> no, it probably wasn't. It was fail, but besides the point, this is something that's been urban legend. This is something that, you know, geeks have you know, talked about for years and years and years. Isn't about... this story older than the internet? Yes. Yeah. It's 30 but years old. To say it's an urban legend is kind of false because this stuff was reported on like back in 1983. Yeah, so. but there was still beyond that report, there was actually no, like nothing else to corroborate it. I mean, all of the stuff that actually stated where it was, was still held by the company. I no, mean, no, it was no, actually it was publicly known that it was in the a land the public city landfill like located in the middle of the play- city to my understanding it was literally in the middle of bumfuck nowhere not in the middle of the city again that's part of there's a lot of misinformation regarding video game history and <laughs> well you so are a video game historian so and like I said, enlighten that's, us <laughs> that's part of it there's just a lot of misinformation for example it wasn't in the middle of nowhere it was the city landfill located smack dab in the middle of the place also it wasn't just ET cartridges. It was def- uh, defective carts, defective consoles, defective computers, arcades, uh, arcade parts. It, it really was just anything. Um, there were reports of even kids going in there at night, looting the place, and finding carts for games like, e- of course, ET, Raiders Lost Ark, Defender, Berserk, all that kind of stuff. Now, isn't it true that at the time when they mass produced these ET titles, they had produced more cartridges than there were systems sold? Yep. Uh, I know. I think that was Pac-Man. Then why exactly were... did we get the entire like huge mythic tale of so many cartridges of ET, and it's so bad that you know they had to be put in the landfill? Again, misinformation. You know, this shit started in the '90s, and so it's. It's been like that ever since. All I keep thinking of every time you say misinformation is the episode of South Park. (laughs) 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 Like, I love that because then, like, uh, Kyle's just like coughing up like black goo and she's like, that's the toxins that are coming up. (laughs) No, that's his oatmeal that he just ate five minutes ago. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. There's. You see, that's my. That's always a problem I've always had with video game history is that there's a shit ton of misinformation out there. Hmm. Like, there's always like I, you would not believe how many Microsoft <clears throat> fanboys I've seen try claiming that Microsoft somehow designed the Dreamcast. That's no, fun. and the People Xbox. People are fucking stupid. No, it was no, no, a no, partnership. No, it ran, yes, it was a partnership, and it was a very specialized, capsulated version of Windows. Uh, what was it called? CE. Yes, Windows Custom Edition. It literally Literally. says it on the front of the damn console. Actually, the interesting fact, the Dreamcast actually doesn't have an operating system. At the time, it does, you dumbass. No, it doesn't, because Uh, if you look at the front of the system, it says compatible with Windows CE. uh, The operating system is not located on the console. It's located on the game disk. Kevin. This is why it was so easy for developers to develop for the system, because they could basically develop any game on any operating system, and it would run it on the Dreamcast. Kevin. Yeah, you're, you're, you're arguing. Ran like a co- yeah, I'm you sorry. You know how today we have uh, USB uh, OSs? Yes. Like you can put an entire... Uh, that's exactly what he's talking about. That's yeah, no, 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 ran no, off but, ramp. Yeah, but Kevin, just understand how stupid you sounded. The console has an OS, okay? <laughs> it's 
It's called a, a BIOS. And yeah, the way that you can manage your memory cards when there's no game disc in there, the way you have the audio CD player, you know, the console settings, that's your OS, okay? Just just putting that out there. Uh, it, uh, I'm sorry, but it, it was around the time the consoles were literally just one-trick ponies, so naturally it really doesn't come. They still are one-trick ponies. No, 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 no. They're getting to the whole multimedia aspect. They're just shitty at it. They're just <laughs> let, let me just ask you one question. Can you upgrade the console? Nowadays, no. yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, the only thing you can upgrade is the damn hard drive. That doesn't really... Or if you're willing to, uh, you know, basically nuke, nuke the bots, or you can actually, uh, you know, there are modded versions of the Xbox 360 that I've seen, which, you know, some people, although since it wasn't proprietary, naturally they couldn't go on okay. Xbox okay. Live. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The, the better question is, does it have a GTX 780 Ti? Oh, you're talking about the uh, the comic I showed you. Okay. Yes, and I, I'm totally, I'm having that on loop. That's seriously going to be, like, if you're watching this episode and you're, you're, you're like, what the hell is this, like, shit? It's, I'm just doing, like, a slideshow that's on loop of this awesome comic that uh, Andy sent me. That'll teach me for sharing stuff. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you, you told me to put it on there, so why not? I didn't think you would do it, that's why. <laughs> Okay, so moving on. No, uh, no, 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 no. That, does, we does we it, are totally not done with the damn dig. What the fuck? That's oh, what I meant. We're, we're moving on to the, the, the dig thing. It That's doesn't I mean. matter. I mean, as of right now, believe it or not, there's still people that think the whole dig was a fraud. Okay, this is Kevin a non-story. <laughs> Kevin was a conspiracy theorist. It there, doesn't matter. We landed aliens. on the moon. There's a giant pile of trash. Fucking deal yeah, with man. it. The world is just It's as all conspiracy. <laughs> The government's watching us. Fucking put on, uh, put your aluminum hat back on and go snort some fucking condensed milk. I, I got nothing for you. Condensed milk. Good for all. <laughs> this episode of The Twilight Zone brought to you by Canteen's Coat Milk. <laughs> what is it? Uh, there was a picture of a black and white thing that said evaporated water for sale. <laughs> <laughs> Just add water. <laughs> Oh, I have to say, let's talk about The Twilight Zone a little bit, okay? I know you two haven't watched it yet, but The Twilight Zone is so beautiful. Like, just watching, like, even the very first episode, Where Is Everybody? You see every little detail. And, I mean, these are details that, you know, you know people always say, oh, I watch it in HD, it's on Spike TV. No, no, no. Spike TV doesn't have shit on the Blu-ray version. The Blu-ray version, as, as crisp and clear as it's going to get. And I mean, to the point where they're like the third episode in or fourth episode in, there's a screen door. Um, it's the one where the guy goes back in time in his childhood and he doesn't realize it. And he just sees his, him, himself and his parents. So he's at, the, at his house. And you see each individual square on that uh, screen door. Fellow viewers, if you're just joining us in, uh, joining in just now, and don't understand why the hell he's talking about Twilight Zone, uh, within the last month, our friend here received the Twilight Zone Blu-ray edition, the complete collection, complete set, along with uh, how many hours is it of extra footage? Um, I don't know how many hours, but it, the, altogether, is 74 hours worth of content, including the original unaired pilot. No, the unaired version of the pilot. So, like, the, the pilot was aired. As where is everybody, but there's a slight difference to it, um, and it, it's the original pitch that um, uh, Rod Stewart, uh, Rod, I don't know why I'm saying Rod, Rod Stewart, Sterling. Rod Sterling pitched, and um, and I'm watching this original sales pitch. So this guy was right on the money. Like when he was like, okay, this is going to be a series that's just never been done before, a concept that you know will keep you guessing what what kind of story is going to come up next. You know, and, and really saying that, you know, hey, advertisers, you know, people will, after watching this episode the following day, buy your cigarettes or buy your condensed milk or whatever. And, you know, he was right on the money. Like, And the, the other great thing is it has the radio version of all these episodes on it, too. So, oh, really? And as you can radio tell, version. this yes, uh, it has the radio version. Blu-ray. On a Blu-ray, it also directly can, uh, from it, was it directly taken from the celluloid itself, so as to literally like this huh. is as high as fidelity as possible. Yeah, even the audio, um, the audio is uncompressed um, mono audio taken from the original magnetic uh, audio strips. 
I mean, not so, magnetic. I mean, the original. End all be all. It is a the Sangral, the Holy Grail for geekdom. Got exactly. it out of your system? And, and the th- well, huh? No, I have not yet gotten out of the system. I only finished okay. disc one. I still got, how many discs are in here? I got uh, 24 di- uh, discs total, so I got 23 discs to go. Wow. And it is beautiful. One thing I'm a little tad ticked off at is, you know, as a geek, you want everything to be perfect. But when they fuck up the inserts, where the insert for case number one is case number six, and the rest of them are okay, I'm pissed off. I've because the inserts tell you the the each episode. It tells you the summary of each episode uh, for each season on on each one. So the problem is I don't have <clears throat> that 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 card for season one. I'm just <clears throat> pissed off. So I might write a letter or something to CBS and see if they can just send me the the correct card. They're usually good about that stuff, especially when it's supposed to be a four hundred dollar set. Fun fact, I didn't buy it for that. <laughs> There's a Jew in all of us. Well, moving on. What's uh, Speaking what about first... Jews, oh, did God. you hear about that thing where, um, you know, Oculus Rift is kind of getting sued? Worst segue. Yeah. I tried. Anti-Semitism does not work as the best ingredient for, you know, segues or conversation, jokes. Pretty much anything. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, even the Jews hate themselves. You don't need to add anything to the pot, okay? It's already very rich. At no point, at no point have I said anything hateful, okay? I love the Jews. I do. This is going down a road that (laughs) Memphis like. Yeah. Let, let, and let's... instead of like saying let's stop and turn around, we're just like the point at which we had to stop was over there. But let's keep going to see what happens. Of course, yeah, it's let's... a train wreck. It's derailed and it's still not stopping. Okay, yes, getting back on fast. track. Getting back on track. Zenny Max is seeking compensation over the Oculus Rift. And why exactly is Zeta Max? Whatever. Oh, because they're claiming that a lot of the technology within the the Oculus Rift was made by John Carmack while he was still an employee with ID, which is even though by oh, shit. when John Carmack was talking with the Oculus Rift team, they actually paid Zenimats for consultation. It yeah. wasn't exactly anything that was being developed at the time. It was simply looking for more information and consultation on what direction to take. And this was during the time that it was still in Kickstarter. So, what the fuck? To draw a, a, a quote from the social network, if Zetamats came up with the Oculus Rift, Zetamats would have come up with the Oculus Rift. That's why we know that they didn't. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Kev. What I, do you think? I mean, it's bullshit. It's complete and utter bullshit. They're just trying to... You know how whenever something like big happens in the news, there's always someone who tries to exploit it? Yep. Like, you know, same thing when, happened to the remember, Wii. I was about, actually, you know what? I was just about to say that. Remember when the Wii became mind huge? And, and we, ha- we just had a, like a mind meld going on just now. That sounds really um, wrong. <laughs> Um, but like you, yeah, you remember that when like the Wii became really big and all of these other companies started claiming they were, get, they were getting sued by a company that makes wireless pointing devices. Yeah, and, and saying that the that... Wii is tapping into their profits, even though they don't make game consoles. Exactly. This is basically the same thing. The Oculus Rift has become is become a very well known thing. It's become very big. Uh, there's a lot of excitement over it, even. Even despite the whole Facebook buyout, there's been still there's still a, a very there, there's still a lot of excitement around the thing. So of course they're trying to exploit it. They're trying to say, hey, you know, uh, one of our guys who now works at your company, it, you know, he was he was working with the project. And out of all the people was, they could have chosen, they chose yeah. John Carmack, who, if he was, I to be correct. He stated on his own Twitter that this is bullshit. Yeah, he said, in quote, he said, No work I have ever done has been patented. ZeniMax owns the code that I wrote, but they don't own VR. Oculus uses zero lines of code that I wrote while under contract to ZeniMax. 
Well, this is going to be short and sweet and more than anything, just negative publicity for ZetaMouse. Well, so. uh, we could all admit that if, if Facebook didn't buy Oculus Rift, this lawsuit would never have happened. No, the lawsuit was going to happen one way or another. It's just that now no, it's it would have happened because if, let's say, that. yeah, yeah, no, it's only happening because it's popular. Uh, see, it's happening now because they have Facebook money behind them. It would have happened later on after the first year profits of the Oculus Rift when they knew that they were making money. Because let's face it, folks, you may be for VR, you may be against VR, whichever, but that shit's going to sell now. Everybody, and I mean fucking everybody. Heck, uh, as we were speaking today, earlier today was the beginning of Eve Fan Fest. Uh, it's like a you know full weekend thing where they have uh, people oh, of the Oh, I read about community. that. Yeah, going to yeah, Reykjavik, there's a, and there's a, what is it, the giant monument that was also yeah, shown I, off. I, yeah, uh, Destructoid had an article about that, the whole monument thing. And they were also showing off, uh, uh, I w was watching the keynotes online, and uh, one of the big things was uh, for Eve Valkyrie. I don't know if you guys heard of it. It's, uh, uh, I've seen it been, been mentioned. Okay, Eve exactly Valkyrie is uh, kind of like a, a flight simulator slash for space combat. You're hmm. in a cockpit looking around with the Oculus Rift, and you're shot out of a tube into a, uh, you know, a, a dogfight. Uh, and it's all in the EVE universe. Now, the main thing is is that this game only existed as a tech demo of what uh, people at CCP wanted to try to do with the Oculus Rift. It was so good, it won a bunch of awards. It's not even, like, it wasn't supposed to be a real game. Ooh. They they now, it's official game. Uh, as of tomorrow, uh, the first people that are ever going to play it are going to play it on SK2. The first SK2s that have been let out from Oculus Rift. And the first people that are playing it are all the way in Reykjavik right now. This um, is something that a company that's been around for 10 years surviving on a single game kind of tells you that if they're willing to put their money into this, everyone else is willing to put their money into this. I'm actually it's, looking at images of it. It actually looks really interesting. Oh, you should see. Oh, they, running, they and it's show. running on Unreal 4. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Fucking Unreal 4, man. One of the first ones we're seeing right out of the gate, and it looks fucking gorgeous. I only saw 30 seconds of gameplay, but it was like live gameplay. So you couldn't yeah. tell the difference between something being, you know, generated or <laughs> live gameplay. It is eye-bleedingly awesome. Yep, and my, and my GTX 690 is going to be like, ah, oh, give me a challenge. Yeah, that's the, well, I hope you get into that because that's going to be one of the parts, uh, one of the games like Dust 514 that ties into the EVE universe. And within a year or two will be a universe of its own, just as in-depth and, you know, I'm just waiting for it. Why don't you Definitely. just start a Kickstarter? Help me convince John to start playing EVE. No, no, I gave up. EVE's not the game for you. No, it's not. I mean, look, everyone has their desires. I respect that you love that game so much. It's a thinking but man's you can't, game. You can't, you can't I know, I'm, I'm just too stupid to play it. No, it's not that you're too stupid. It's that you <laughs> you require something more from the game. I like it because it's not a short play game. It's something that you have to plan for a very long time. Like, I don't know. You can tell what type of game a person likes depending on how they play really, really popular games. For example, I and play if you League. play... Yeah, you play League. Same here. But oh, wait, 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 Kevin, Just that Kevin, statement alone for no, the rest no, no, of the no, gaming no. community should answer any other questions you have from now Kevin, on. Kevin, how good am I at League? I gotta say, he's actually pretty good at it. That question, that answer should also answer any other questions on top of the questions you had before, <laughs> right off the bat. This is becoming yeah, a clusterfuck we, we just, right now. <laughs> before, just before we recorded this, me and John played a match, and yeah, <laughs> holy yeah, shit! And I was stressing out because I was stuck in the middle of a game of War of the Vikings, sla hacking and slashing my way to like not victory, really. I got my ass kicked, but still, it was fucking intense. And then these guys are still playing fucking League of Legends. Yeah, but no, no, I turned a game that we were pretty much destined to lose, and I, you know, strategized. I said, let's get Baron, you know, after we ace out, and then we're going to win. It's going to be home free. Kevin's like, w what does Baron do? What does Baron do? I'm like, just, just fucking attack the Baron. <laughs> you know, so once we got it, we flash back to the base, get fully healed up, and then we fucking stormed the front door and ripped people to shreds. The other uh, team's um, top player, which is Master Yi, uh, we just raped him right then and there, and it was a wrap. Lol. I was single killing people with Q, and I play Annie, and I'm a fucking asshole with Annie. Oh, boy. Well, I got a bit, uh, bit of news for the uh, butthurt uh, Wii U uh, 
collective out there. Uh-oh. Ubisoft is Uh-oh, now fight. concentrating. What? No. Ubisoft is now concentrating on Watch Dogs for Wii U, which is one of the most, well, not the most, but a very, very expected title for this year. It was going to be for PC. It's going to be for Xbox uh, One. It's going to be for PS4. And now, now we have a new, on... uh, what's it? Uh, was it Doom Forever? No, no. Was it Duke Nukem Forever right here? Watch Dogs. Won't come out for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope not. I'm actually. We're sorry to say, but Watch Dogs is delayed again. Well, they're you know, delaying before... it. well hey, hey, you can't you know bitch about this because they're delaying just because they want to make sure that the Wii U version is actually good. Because even they have to admit the Wii U. Eh. <laughs> but anyway, you have that to look forward to. You know what I just realized. I still have Eve installed on my rig. Ah, dude, uninstall it. It takes up too much I know. Space. It's just such a waste of life. <laughs> I'm messing with you, Andy. I don't care. You would not survive playing Eve. Like, no shit. Also, I would probably fall asleep while I'm playing. No, no. The first few weeks are actually pretty fucking intense if you know what the hell you're doing. But you wouldn't survive it. It'd take too much of your, like... It's not a game for anyone. Basically, Neither you when, when, nor Andy, Kevin, was, when you, Andy was giving me a demonstration of the game, he's like, look at this epicness right here. I'm like, well, I don't see anything happening. No, no, there's this big-ass war going on, but it would take me two months to travel to that spot where the war is happening, and by the time I go there, um, you know, it's just not going to be there. In two months, real time. For the not- Eve players <laughs> out there, I was running a level four mission out of Proteus and just armor tanking it and taking out wave after wave of Garistas. This guy doesn't seem to understand that when lasers are firing and explosions because he can't see the scale. For any other EVE player who's done it before and soloed a level 4 on a shitty boat, you can understand it's a bit harrowing, especially when the shitty boat is about 1.2 billion isk. But that's not the point. <laughs> no, no. Now, what is that other other game you've been playing? Because I, I, I saw you've been tweeting, or not tweeting, but you're like showing off something where it's Stark Industry or something. What's the thing where you could actually buy real ships with like $100 real cash? Star Citizen. Yes. What is that? Star Citizen oh, is a yes, new yes, MMO. This. Uh, if you've ever played Wing Commander, that's the guy. The guy came it's, out of retirement. It, yeah. I forgot his name. Shit. Oh, my God. Anyway, uh, he came out of retirement to come up with a PC game, flight simulator, and space combat simulator, but like a real one. And this is like oh, so um, fucking bleeding edge. Chris this Roberts. Is, Yes. That's Chris serious. Roberts, yeah, right. He, he, he got sick and tired of all games being dumbed down for consoles and PC games going by the wayside. And so what he did was come up with uh, a type of like Eve-like universe, but it's going to be full-fledged. Like It's not just a ship. No, you are a person inside of a ship, inside of another ship if you want. Uh, I already got a couple of uh, friends in Sweden. My, we're all uh, planning on uh, so is it like conglomerately a, a much, purchasing a ship. <laughs> so is it like a much more expanded version of Privateer? Think Privateer, but fully MMO. Hmm. Okay. And there are supposedly parts of the map that they, even from the beginning, it's going to be a shared, uh, single shard. Uh, con- well, their concept is going off the Eve uh, single shard system, where they're going to have uh, a map that is, you know, procedurally generated. But the problem is, is that not all of it is known, or only a sh- small part of it is known in the beginning of the game. And so with players playing the game and exploring they can actually name systems when they find them or stuff like that and so literally it's a game that's going to continually grow and it's made to last years instead of just weeks or months depending on you know other mmos and their system of you know hooking players it's not like wow where you're like okay i've reached level 80 what now what do i do this is something where it's like uh they're trying to copy the whole self-sustaining economic system and political system that we have in eve but He's trying to do it with a really fancier shell. And some of these things that he's pulling off. There was a 14-minute demo of uh, Star Citizen Dogfight module. Uh, buggy as fuck. Crashed a bunch of times. But so fucking beautiful. And just like everything you saw in the demo is everything you've ever wanted in a space flight fight simulator. There's... Uh, there's uh, accounting for gravity. There's accounting for acceleration. There's Newtonian flight, which means that you can burst your engines on full blast towards your enemy and then turn off your engines and use your alti- uh, altitude adjusters to turn the ship around. You know, like any scene out of Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> you could still be going in the same direction, but you change the orientation of the ship and start shooting at shit. 
all in real time, all fucking beautiful. Anyway, that's the PC master race in me. Speaking of shit that we're not sure anyone else cares about, anyone care about Call of Duty? No. Uh, no. I, I, I stopped playing. I was a good hardcore player, but Ghost ruined it all. Mm. Yeah, I heard Game Informer uh, unveiled the new Call of Duty. What, there's yeah. a new one? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that's uh, what I wanted to talk about. There's supposedly a new Call, Call of Duty. Ghost 2. But, but it's got Kevin Spacey doing his Frank Underwood impression thing, so immediately, unfortunately, I am now interested. I'm sorry, gaming community. I have lost honor in your eyes, but I'm actually interested about this because if they're going for storyline and they put Kevin Spacey on it, Either A, they're really putting a lot of money hoping something sticks at this point, or something different might be coming down the pipeline. That's line. because they I realized they failed completely with ghosts. Now, why don't you like Ghost? Okay, let me count the ways. One, the maps are too fucking big. Two, the spawning is stupid and retarded. Three, the diversity of weapons is shit because anyone can get any weapon they want from the get-go you know four weapon balancing is shit five no one gives a fuck about the dog <laughs> now speaking of ghosts tom clancy's ghost recon phantoms hit steam a couple of weeks ago have any of you tried it no no is free it free to play, to play? yeah it's free to play third person shooter first person shooter it's i can't say it's shitty it's actually not bad it's and not pay to win by the way all right. Thanks. So, so you don't have to put up a second mortgage to win the game. No, you can buy stuff, but it's more towards the you look know, of. It. Actually, let's go on a little tangent here. You know, on my commute to and from work, the one thing that just you know is a little painful to watch is the sheer amount of people that play Candy Crush Saga on their fucking phones. I can actually safely say that I've never played that shit. I've seen people play it. But I've never played it myself. Personally. Yeah, and you're never going to play it because you're not the demographic for it. The demographic for Candy Crush is very, very wide because there are a lot of people that are just the same. Or as you very... used to say, colors. Uh, okay, you're trying to make me sound like a fucking racist. No. <laughs> no. I, I hate said... everyone equally. Just because no, you're no. dirtier He's... than another version of yourself oh, does not mean... He's an equal I opportunity hate. hater. I'm talking about... Damn no, right. wasn't there a science that they, they said that like, the, for instance, the reason why wasn't like Tetris or, or Pac-Man, the reason why it was very popular was because of the color palette. If you think about it, Candy Crush Saga, just is very vibrant with colors, and they say for some reason it just attracts like the because lowest common denominator like or something. Things. Yeah. No, that, I'm serious. <laughs> that's that's all I see. And it's like, um, I mean, basically, this is the Angry Birds right now. Um, it yeah. is just it, immensely popular. They're making a boatload of cash. Um, I mean, they're making more money than <coughs> oh. <coughs> Nintendo, uh, but yeah. oh, that reminds me. Also, also the uh, King game, uh, King, the developer of the game, they've basically stopped doing the whole uh, uh, trying to copyright words "candy" and "saga." Yeah. They've stopped it. So, and that's news. Why? Well, because they kept going after other independent developers over that. Hmm. And they we're like, surprised why? The, the, the whole point of it is that when a because company... Because the words candy and saga are not... You can't really copyright them because they're so so such common words. And Apple wanted to copyright Apple, okay? So, you know, Apple sued New York City because they called themselves the Big Apple. It's like, oh, you know, they've, companies... They've, su they've sued Apple Records before. I know. So... The point I'm trying to say is companies, when they get big, they get foolish... And they they tend to chase you know very yeah. bizarre uh, lawsuits. It's all about the money. Yep. Heck, look, Kevin. If you could copyright your name, so that way every single person on this earth that's named Kevin would owe you a dollar, wouldn't you do it? Well, if he was rich enough, uh, maybe. If I was an <laughs> asshole, maybe. No, no. I'm just saying. If if you could do it, get away with it, and make a shitload of cash. Of course. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Candy yeah. Crush, you know, I mean, King Software, you know, all, that's... Especially they, that, unfortunately, in this country, big business or companies are considered individuals. So, yeah, they can do whatever the fuck they exactly. want. Exactly, and that's the thing. They just, look, they were trying it. The whole point is, if you, if you can get away with it, why not try? 
And that's the point, you know, that I wouldn't, I don't blame them because I'm pretty sure any other company, if they were put in their position, they would do the same thing. That's all. all just horrible people, no matter what. Exactly. I mean, Microsoft patented the start menu. I mean, is it something that they should be able to patent? No. I mean, they patented shutting down a computer. <laughs> should they be able to do that? No. Really? <laughs> yes, they have. That I don't know about. But it's kind of like how Marvel once owned the copyright for the word zombie. That's true. That's cool. Yeah. See, but they got away with it. That's big business. That's capitalism, and that's the end of our show. No, no well, it's not. <laughs> no, no. We have. No, no, you know what else is that. capitalism? Okay, no, no. Communism. Beside, the beside Xbox the One is launching thing. in China in September. Oh. oh, yes. Good. Good segue. Thank you. See, I'm trying to reclaim my throne. Yeah. Yes. The, my yes. Microsoft has announced that the the Xbox One is going to China. Now let's wait as we. You know, listen to the collective sigh of uncaring from the rest of the gaming world. Okay, you know what else was going to China? Your job? Malaysian flight. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, I'm sorry. That, that was low. I'm sorry. That was, John, too soon. <laughs> too soon. <laughs> uh. Well, anyway, yes, it's going I'm to China. I'm just saying the Why Xbox One will crash and burn. <laughs> Why do we care that the Dude. Xbox One is going to China, Kevin? Because China just left their, what is it, like 15-year-long console ban or something like that? Yeah. Yeah, also, it's, it's... Let me know when they lift their you-have-a-right-to-live ban. Well, the problem is, is that recently a lot of the socioeconomic policies that they initiated when they, you know, initially became the People's Republic of China to, you know, forestall the downfall of their own government. A lot of the shit worked in the short term, but remember, these were military people trying to run a nation of with the highest population density, and that's to India. So, yeah, the laws from outside look fucking ridiculous, but, yeah, at the time, the law of keeping only one child, the law of uh, all that shit made sense in the short term. But now that they're starting to stall their economic fervor, and the bubble that they created for themselves may pop at any moment. That's when they need to start allowing outside industry in. Now, you were saying that there were some valid arguments as to why this was a bad idea. Kev? Well, uh, American McGee, the, the game developer of the Who uh, no one Alice gives game. a shit about. I know, I know. He hasn't but he, been relevant since fucking, I, I don't know. <laughs> I know, but he did make some very good points, such as the fact that the Xbox One and PS4 are already available in China. Piracy. Thanks to, thanks to piracy, yeah, uh, that the set top box market is already saturated and is basically the number one selling item in China right now. Not our problem. Okay, and piracy is huge. You know, it's so huge over there that you know, it, you know, they're Microsoft's probably going to barely make any money off of games. Uh, one of the other things was cultural slash audience disconnect. Page eight through two. Okay, yeah, uh, and of course censorship and restrictions on content. So, whatever. It's China. So what they most <laughs> likely do is take the first crate, take all the boxes apart, put them back together in a red box, and call it Red Bots One. And no one's going to do anything because when it comes to piracy and when it comes to uh, patent law, everything when it comes to China, nobody gives a shit. But also a few weeks ago, the uh, list of rules of what can't, uh, can't and can't be in the video games was leaked, actually. This is like laughably bad. <laughs> it, uh, okay. Apparently, Games in Asia picked up on a Shanghai government release that goes over the... Uh, goes over the rules for foreign game makers. Oh dear God! Um, and for console makers, and for consoles, uh, it's actually very simple. Like you know, they must have to they have to work with a local partner and operate outside, uh, operate out of the Shanghai Free Trade Zone. Okay. However, for games, it's completely different because it has to go th has to be approved by the cultural department in charge. Yep. Okay. And that includes the local uh, Shanghai government cultural department, okay, and not the national uh, national ministry of culture. And apparently, some of this stuff is just—it's fucking ridiculous. Uh, games that, you know, the uh, 
the following stuff is not allowed to be included in video games. Gambling related content or game features. Anything that violates co China's constitution. Anything that threatens China's national unity, sovereignty, or territorial integrity. Anything that harms the nation's reputation, security, or interests. Wait wait, 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 wait. I think we're all starting to see that these are extremely generalized things. That way they can just fucking pull it out of their ass and say, hey, I don't like this because. Isn't well, that the China way? No, okay? I've met Chinese people. Chinese people are fucking intelligent. They're knowledgeable. Not, no, They're no, 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 no. The I'm problem just is the, this the country, fucking system. Yeah, no, their government is shit. Yeah. Hey, just shame. in. We're banned in China because we said the truth. No, it's a shame because that is an open market that is more than willing to fucking compete on the planet. But the problem is is that their, their, their system of government is just lacking in reasoning every so often. It's a shame. Well, so are we, but... <laughs> yeah, but we're not the ones responsible for one of the largest populated planet, fucking nations on the planet. When we, They have the right to fucking start wars, which they won't because, you know, they're too gubby with uh, uh, Russia and we owe them everything, so. <laughs> now, this, now I know, you know, the end of that news, because this is something that I know it's not even on the script, don't worry, but this is breaking news and this is something that we have to discuss. Now, you know about that super huge security hole that was found in Internet Explorer, like last weekend? Uh-huh. Heartbleed? Now, you know how... No, not Heartbleed. This is no, even worse. Uh, <laughs> um, don't get me started. Okay, yeah, I did. Oh, hey, look, I, I'm an IT consultant. I have to deal with this I'm shit. I'm a security consultant, so... Yeah, you can go fuck yourself, but... <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, I've been yeah, working... I'm the guy you call when you have questions about this shit, but okay, still, yes. please, go on. Now, oh, I've been shit, tasked... It's... For the past month, I've been tasked with, like, re removing as many XP machines off of company networks and, you know, converting them to Windows 7 and, and just, you know, because, look... XP is old. It's dead. Get over it. Yes. Remove it. Right? Okay, and this but is for anyone else listening as well. If you or anyone you know is still using XP, fuck you. You deserve everything that's going to happen. But no, 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 no. But here's it's the been problem. It's been months since they've been saying it on the no, news. No, I know. Everywhere. But you know what Microsoft just did? They threw another fucking life raft, okay? <laughs> because they originally said XP is not getting an update patch to fix this zero-day security hole that was discovered in Internet Explorer. They but shouldn't. then they write up an exception. They said, we are going to um, release this patch as an exception because of the proximity to the end of support for XP. Oh, my fucking... Are you fucking kidding me? Like, you know, like uh, where I work... It's we... this shit that keeps people using Internet Explorer 4. Exactly. Or Windows XP Service Pack 1, Okay. This is the kind of this is if you ever want to know why your computer sucks, why it's slow, why it's because you are too stupid to fucking figure out how to keep this shit running correctly. And everyone who has a computer problem deserves it because these machines have gotten to the point that they are so simple to use, so simple to upkeep that a fucking child can do it. In fact, children are doing it. <laughs> there's in Windows 8, there's literally a button that says reinstall your computer. The fucking thing will reinstall your computer itself, okay? Okay. <laughs> You cannot get it any simpler. If you wanted it simpler, you are legally brain dead at this point if you're unable to do it like that. Hey, look, I know a blind man who still uses a computer better than most people I know. Well, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, do you mean Bruce? Yeah. I, I know the type of keyboards that they would use. I had to oh, set he was, up another system. Oh, you missed ones. it. He was actually complaining because he's, I think he's still using XP. <laughs> oh, my God. And he God. was, like, complaining about this. Everything I liked about him, gone out the window. Just <laughs> fucking, in like, a second. Oh, and another thing, and this happened to two people last week, and it seems to be, like, the bigger, like, scam that's been going around now. You're going to talk about crypto bit. No, no, I'm not oh. talking about crypto bit because that's going to be like an hour and a half of me raging at the microphone with like a vein popping in the side Same of my neck. Same here. I just had to deal with it this week on two hey. different company networks, okay? Just, it's not, <laughs> they, we're not doing it because you're going to, nobody wants to hear about it. And even if we do explain it, no one will understand why we're raging. Uh, what happened was, is that these two people both were contacted by someone claiming to be from Microsoft. Okay. They were then tasked with the simple thing of allowing them to remote connect onto their system uh, there there's problem number one there, there you go see right there 
for any normal person, you may think, oh, it's Microsoft calling and telling me I got a virus. No, one, Microsoft will never cold call you. I'm saying this not to like poke fun at anyone. I'm not saying this. A lot of people don't fucking know. A lot of people think that Microsoft. And I yeah, thought that was common sense. It's not. Okay, here's the thing. If you ever get called by someone saying that they're from Microsoft, immediately that tells you that they are not from Microsoft. They never cold call. They will never cold call. You have to call them. That's how it works. But what Second, if they call me back after I already called them? If anyone ever <laughs> asks for a remote access to your computer, unless you put in a specific ticket with Microsoft uh, support, don't let anyone remotely on your computer. Hey, I remote control people's computers all the time. Are you going to shut the fuck up or what? <laughs> okay, continue. Okay, never let anyone remotely control your computer. Third, and this is like the God law. This is the, the law that reigns upon every fucking Windows operating system from fucking CE to now. Never let anyone who you don't know, or even someone you do know, touch your System32 file. No matter what the fuck they say, no matter, never touch it. That is a no-go. That is basically the Ark of, uh, Ark of the Covenant. You don't want to open that shit up or else you're going to get a bottle of Nazi face paint, okay? Just, no. Don't touch a System32, never let someone in remotely, and never trust anyone who says that they are Microsoft calling you on the phone unless you have specifically asked someone to call you and left a ticket. No one's going to call you because you have a virus. No one's going to call you because you need an update. No one's going to call you to try to sell you anything. If they're doing it, they're doing it only to get on your computer and provide themselves a back door to screw you over beyond belief because that is what... That's... As um, a gray hat... Internet security consultant, I can tell you that that is one of the simplest ways for someone to get information on somebody else, okay? And this works on old people. This works on parents that are too dumb to fucking... You want to know how dumb some of these people are? There was a, uh, a parent that set up a FOSCAM wireless internet, uh, a wireless internet camera on the crib of their baby and used oh, it as a baby monitor. This was on CNN. This is, this is going This bad. is, yeah. This was on CNN, and this was a story that was thrown to me by uh, an old friend from uh, high school. Somebody had hacked into their wireless camera, not oh, the gosh. network. Because remember, the FOSCAM systems carry their own wireless band receiver and transmitter. Now, if you're smart, or even not that smart, but like sane, you would take off the wireless antenna and make it impossible for it to receive or transmit data wireless. But no. Because they didn't want to run a cable three feet, they put it only with power and on a wireless, unencrypted, unlocked signal. Naturally, in the middle of the fucking night, there was some guy yelling at their baby through the fucking camera. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, this can't be right. How can they sell something like, bitch, I have the same camera. I have the same system on my front door. I have it wired because I don't want wireless transmissions going through without me fucking you knowing every single fucking type of encryption going through there and on top of which it's on the third fucking page of the manual that I can be holding in my hand right now that says lock your system in bold fucking letters mind you lock your system here's how okay when it tells you how to make it safe that's when it's no longer the fault of the company no longer the fault of the person who sold it it's the fault of the parents and the fault of the people who are too fucking stupid to read the manual oh okay and that's what it. I have to add to that is I had to spend two hours today teaching old people how to use Office 2013. Oh, I wanted fun. to hang myself. Oh. All Wait, 2013, day. that's the one you have to log in to use, right? That's the service, not the program. No, no, no. That's Office 365. No, we, ah. we, use, we use corporate licenses. And nice. th the problem is we upgraded a, a lot of people from XP to 7 and from oh, Office God. 2007 to Office 2013. And the amount of questions that I've had to answer in the past month alone have made me want to jump off a bridge. Because it's not bad enough that I have to teach somebody. It's bad enough to the point where I've taught the person the same set of instructions six fucking times. They will never get it, dude. As someone who worked in the private sector as well, they will keep asking you the same questions as oh, long God. as they have. Not because they don't understand it. It's because they want to seem like they're trying to, quote, get it. But the fact is... No, is that this one is just... They're so reluctant to change that they want to, you know, give off the precedence that the computer is defective. Therefore, they should have the right to go back to the old machine. John, that's old people. <laughs>
No, that's it's not just how old. they are. No, it's not even that old. Like, I, I mean, there are people that are probably in their mid thirties too that I have to I've deal with. I've handled people that have been my com- age working at some of these companies, and they don't know fucking a mouse from a fucking you know USB key. Okay, there are some people that are truly that stupid naturally, and not because you know they have some type of like a genetic defect or they were <laughs> you know chugging lead when they were kids or they were dropped as children or they're fucking I don't know some minority or something and as a minority I can say that, that has fucking nothing to do with it. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter some people just naturally choose to be stupid and willingly oh, stay that way they choose it they embrace it as a way of life ignorance come- is bliss <laughs> do you know how many do you know how many times a day I get customers coming up to my register and asking me if I'm open if my register's open are you open <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck does the you light just, above you my just head left say? That, you just left that open, dude. No, um, but you know what I mean. It's like, what the fuck does the light above my head say? Dude, I used to work in, in retail. I, yeah. I've been through it, and there are times where, yeah. where when someone asked me if I was open, instead of saying anything, I just took the light switch, and I just flicked it up and down, up and down. <laughs> No, no, it's absolutely perfect that people of our age and our generation have to go through because we've all worked at a register. We've all, all three oh, no, of us. Oh, no, no, no. I think, so, look, the point of it is if you've never worked in, in retail, I have no respect for you. No, no, everyone I think everyone has, to work, has retail, to work in retail. At least yeah. once in their lives in order to finally destroy the naivete and love of humanity that you come out of school with. Because if you're still in fucking high school, if you're still in fucking college, you know nothing. Unless you've actually worked, okay? <laughs> it doesn't matter how well educated you may be, what good upbringing you have, how talented other people tell you. If you are still in the academics, you know nothing of the real world unless you get a job. And even then, <laughs> even then, unless you've, you, you've been able to survive by yourself from nothing, you, you, you're, you're, you're a waste of space, okay? <laughs> All I have to say, and this is the final comment on this, these people keep us in business. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness for the idiots. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the beauty of it is like, um, my favorite is repeat customers. People that, they infect the shit out of their machine, you clean it out, Oh God, and I then love a month those. later, they fuck it up again. And, and then it's the same exact fucking thing. <laughs> exactly. It, it's just, you know, the beauty of that is just, it requires no tools, requires no expense on your part it requires 10 seconds two button clicks and the same fucking charge because you know what fuck you (laughs) and and then and look you know what i'm doing my due diligence you should be more careful with your computer you should be careful with what sites you go on you should not open up links yeah 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 i I promise i'm gonna do that a month later if if there's someone that just do it randomly and then you don't tell them exactly what it is that they did that caused it okay they're going to do it again thinking that maybe it wasn't it but if you take your time to explicitly say okay here is a document i want you to look at this here it's open this website and this website you went to both of these and this is what caused this and this is what caused this you need to avoid going to these websites please even though you didn't have an antivirus now and you have an antivirus now it's uh, it's it's uh, a, no, 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 no. Uh, look uh, antivirus is a false sense of security it really is depending look, on the antivirus actually no i still think even the greatest of antiviruses are still vulnerable because think All about think are- about think about the ransomware shit that i was trying to tell you know yeah. mention a little bit earlier which by the way ransomware right now is the all-time worst thing you could possibly be infected with yeah because as I said, I've although I still it. fucking love it, I I I oh I don't no, care. it's What's brilliance, just, but it's such beautiful. a headache. It's, it's and it's headache. impossible to get around. I'm sorry. There, there is if you have it, you're no fucked. One, yeah, no one can help you. It doesn't matter how good of a quote PC guy you may know. If no, you are even security ransomware. experts are still scratching their heads, can't figure out a solution. It's not to even this. It, there is no solution because it is a self perpetuating situation it is a problem that creates itself you know what we should have a we should have like no, a little, you, but you know what the the encryption bit is that they use they use literally um uh no 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 two thousand oh my god they use fucking military grade they nice. use military grade um encryption and it's just like what the fuck <laughs> okay we've been talking too much and I'm it's sorry. too much of a downer what i'm gonna say i got a good bit of news uh, did anyone ever play uh, back in the day a game uh, game series called No One Lives Forever? No. No. It was a stealth espionage game uh, from night. 
something. Night Jump. Night, night Dive Ni- Studios. Nigeria? No, Night Dive Studios. Uh, it was uh, No One Lives Forever, The Operative, A Spy in Harm's Way, and Contract Jack. Now, the thing is, is that uh, the games haven't been available in digital download or anything because they haven't been... Uh, Activision supposedly had the rights to them. But recently, it turns out that not even Activision knew who had the rights. They just knew that they didn't have the rights. <laughs> and so, uh, on Silla Conera, that's a strange... Stand. Anyway, it was found out that Night Dive Studios uh, has the trademarks for No One Lives Forever, and they're going to bring them back for Steam and GOG and, like, fucking Ooh. everything. So, and this is, these are the guys that brought, like, System Shock 2 back, The Seventh Guest, uh, Wizardry series. You know, th- these are really cool games. And them being re-released, I think, is going to be, like, a nice little nostalgia explosion that a lot of people should get on there. So this is one game you, should, you guys should look out for. At least the oh, original. wait a minute. I just looked it up. Yes, I do remember this. Damn right. Yes, we got a Yes, I never played it, but I remember reading about it. It's a, it's a stealth, uh, kind of like a, you know, espionage thought game that it's yeah. more about thinking your way through the, uh, instead of just like, I mean, you can fucking shoot your way through if you're, you know, but like your character isn't exactly built for running and gunning, I'm saying. <laughs> but anyway, that's, that's a nice little piece of like huzzah. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I love this like link that you sent. Because I like, I like the, the fake thing. It says, alert, malware has been detected on your computer. Please go to my computer, C drive, Windows, and delete the folder named System32 to correct this error. <laughs> <laughs> or, or my other one is like, it's, open up Notepad. No, okay, no. Never, never do that. I did that as a joke on someone's system. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. You know what this reminds me of, Andy? Remember that time when I was like really hardcore Vista whore? And um and when I, I install yes V Dub when I installed Vista on one of the school computers and I'm like I'm I was preaching about the security and how it's more stable and how it's harder to destroy Andy said give me ten minutes and then in two minutes he destroyed Vista yep <laughs> <laughs> I I had um you know underestimated myself the, the thing is is that that's the only gift I really have how to break shit and then he goes he's like hey John you should show us how to reinstall Windows <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the problem was is that I had actually fucked up the BIOS as well so that computer was no longer working after that. <laughs> it'll never, I'll never forget when um, we were playing around with like hacking, right? So he's sitting on another workstation in the same computer, and we're just we were trying to see who can you know block successfully block each other. So we were playing with firewalls, we we're playing with zone alarm, and all this. So you know this bastard. No, no, no. It gets better. Son of a bitch. <laughs> the only way he stopped me was by literally disconnecting the computer. <laughs> Yeah, no, I went into the firewall, and I just said, block everything. <laughs> and me, I'm thinking, okay, maybe I'm not getting anything on ports. Maybe there's something wrong with the network. Maybe he's, you know, he's actually blocking any inter... No, the fucker just pressed two buttons and blocked me. <laughs> no, but we were. it was pretty fun, because remember the other thing we did? We used, um, as a senior prank, and this is one that... I, I can't say, say if I remember this or if I did this. And I no, you were part of this. It. I'm pretty sure nobody you remember. can prove it. Yeah. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, you're in denial. Uh, but you know, every every senior prank, they always have like the most bizarre shit. You know, you have one senior prank where they steal the bear, the wooden bear from the from like the, you know, hall. You had a very or uninteresting and boring so, high school. So, so yeah. we we decided yeah. to do one better. Because our our school network was just kind of stupid, where all five no wait there's more than five. Uh, you have five elementary, one middle. Okay, so all seven uh, you know schools yes, are connected, and because they don't have active you know like really good firewall rules, um, you can you can literally print from a computer in high school to any computer in the town okay i remember so what, what we about. ended up doing was there was a program oh. that you can use it's more of a like a computer management application but what it does is it ties into some um, administrative toolkit within windows xp and what you can do is you can send out a command to the entire network that will force every single computer to shut down and we did that <laughs> remember that no no shut up allegedly we may have thought of this as a thought experiment. 
But, yeah, yeah, it happened. Oh, that was awesome. Every single computer throughout the entire network shut down simultaneously. So what was that? It was like almost like 8,000 computers? Yeah. It was loud enough that you could actually hear the power down throughout the entire high school at the time. Yep. And it then was all actually, I remember like, is I remember the, 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 um, the, the, what is the guy that, I guess the CTO or whatever, he just runs into the class and says, <laughs> hey, um, like he was talking to our professor. He's like, I don't know what the fuck just happened. He's like, all the computers shut down. And we're just sitting in the back, just minding our own business. And I, all I remember is our professor just gave us this look. Uh, unfortunately, we were the bad apples that he allowed us to do fucking just anything. But you know what? He is like, uh, I have such a high level of respect because he knew we did it and didn't say anything. Well, the thing was, his rule was if you could get away with it. Well, you can get away with it. <laughs> uh, just like the time that I collected the administrator passwords of a floppy disk. Or the time that we created, uh, what was it, a, a continuous, uh, what was it, Unreal Tournament uh, game that we kept jumping from one computer to the other. Or the entire library of fucking Steam games we had on a couple of computers there. Yes. yes I remember that. Or the secret video game club we had. Yeah. Well, we, well the, the, yeah. I, I remember, like, my favorite story is the following year, um, our professor, the same one that let us have our secret club, um, got a kid uh, suspended because he was playing games on a computer. Yeah, the games that we had left encrypted. Well, no, not encrypted. No, no, we but that was the rule. Mind. The rule was yeah. if you can if encrypt you it to the point where an average Joe student could not find it, it he was okay with it. So we used something called Lock Folder. Um, and and I remember he's like, we which just, by the way isn't really that secure now that you know a few years down the line, not exactly the best thing to use, but still it, it kind of worked, worked for, the time. for it served its purpose. That and, and, and then also, my favorite like, was when like we're like, oh yeah, we're running on these integrated graphics cards, and all okay. of a sudden our professor just opens up a drawer and has fucking like. <laughs> graphics cards they were shitty graphics card mind you but they were dedicated graphics cards with their own built-in memory and at the time they were radeon something or other and yeah, they were like they, were, they weren't shitty but they but they weren't like good. you could run <laughs> no but i mean you could run uh counter-strike you know maxed out yeah. on them i mean they, you could run halo on them they, now were, mind you guys this was back in like 2005 2006 it was 2000 yeah 2005 2006 around that time yeah so at Remember? the time, that was still considered not bleeding edge, but like still, you know. Then after that, we got bored and we started Remember playing the, Magic. Remember the three of us had a StarCraft match all on one hard, uh, on one flash drive. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I remember that because then we we were using a uh, shared drives. <laughs> yeah, and, we, and oh. just three computers playing StarCraft on one flash drive. We had created a uh, swarms and. Yeah. Uh, Anyone who remembers the original StarCraft, yes. this was for when, back in the old days, Spawn. Uh, yeah, it was for, uh, uh, what's it called? It was for LAN games. So a person could buy one disc and then have an entire LAN of, like, multiple computers playing the same game. The thing was, of course, is that you had to come up with, like, a physical copy of the disc. We did it by flash drive. And then, what was it? We virtualized it and sent it out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or what... We created we different. created a network drive that everyone just yes, booted. Yes, and right then off of. from that drive, you just had to be connected on the network and run it as though it were in a fact, CD. Exactly. Good uh, times. We, we had a lot yeah. of time on our hands. Uh, or the I, I just never forget when we had our summer job and we're we're installing laptops and we're using a Pixie booting and we had twenty four laptops going on at the same time and then while we're waiting for the install we just whipped out our laptops and played War, uh, Warcraft three and all this and then you just have the summer school students walking by like just, <laughs> that was that was fun we're getting paid to play games <laughs> they're paying to go to summer school yeah you guys you know you so guys are doing the network pages. thing and yet I was. You know, I was janitorial assistant. Yeah, you shouldn't even mention it, dude. I'm going to do you a favor and edit that out of this episode. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Come on. Oh, come on. There was I just a to... summer job. Yes, Kevin's like scrubbing toilets. Shit. Andy and I just come into the, to the classroom like, yeah, put our feet up. <laughs> Either way, we were lucky. That's yes, it. Because we were. before us and even after us, that didn't happen. So it was just like a one-time thing. We just yeah. It was because we were the first and last to ever do that summer job. They, they used to, uh, according to when I spoke to What's-His-Face, you remember the guy who used to be in the IRA? <laughs> yes. 
I forgot his name. Murphy. Murphy. Yep. Murphy. Uh, he, he spoke to us like about a whole bunch of stuff, and it turned out that they used to do this back in the old days, but like they stopped for some reason. I guess it was because they were lacking funding and stuff like that. And they did it that year because they got a shit ton of funding. They got a bunch of new computers, and yep. they said, "Fuck it, let's just pay them to do the work." And you yep, know. I remember unboxing two count them two thousand fucking Dell laptops. And don't forget the desktops and all the mice. And no, the no, no, no. The, the desktops were refurbs that smelt like ass. <laughs> they came in in fucking pallets, dude. I had never seen so many computers. Oh, God. And then we also learned that the security cameras do, in fact, work. <laughs> I remember it was a rumor for a while. Everyone's like, oh, no, those are dummies. No, actually, no, you're the, the dummy was, because they're real. <laughs> you know how fucking sad it was that people were just like from the administration just came by, picked up a laptop and left? Yep. <laughs> On more than one occasion, I personally wanted to do that because at the time, my laptop was fucking shitty. This one was, like, fucking brand new. But yeah, whatever. They all had Vista, and we all wiped them out and put fucking XP Whatever. It. You know why? Because today I have my Daedalus, and she is a sexy beast. A she's beast. Still, she's still not quite in the same league as mine. Uh, mine's a single core, and her single core is stronger than any one of your cores. Yeah, so, but two heads are better than one. Yeah, they're still arguing with each other. That's a problem. <laughs> uh, no, I, I just have it at the point where I can have one core dedicated to, you know, video encoding while I have the other core running a game, okay? I can! I can do exactly that, all on one core. <laughs> not, not, to inter not to interrupt, but when are we going to end this? Dude, you're just jealous because all you have is 680. No, what? 780 Ti, motherfucker! Not you, Kevin has a 680. <laughs> Yeah, I have a 680, but I don't really. 680 is actually still pretty good. And by the way, yeah. since it's 680, you could still run Castle Wolfenstein. Uh, the specs came out earlier today. Turns oh, out you need segue. a minimum of a. Yeah, well, it's not uh, it's not that big of a deal. But the ca new uh, Wolfenstein game, the uh, specs came out. You're going to need a minimum of four uh, four gigs of RAM. You're going to need anything above a 450, and you're going to need about like 50 gigs of space on your hard drive. And it's. Pretty cool. I mean, you would have thought that some a game that actually looks that nice on PC would have been a bit more hefty, but hey, not bad. Yeah. Oh, and since I didn't do it last time, Kickstarter Corner, I got two things I got to show you guys. Oh, God. Oh, shut up. Whenever I show you something, it's <laughs> fucking awesome. Put your bitch in. First one is for the Sim fans out there. You know, people who play Civ, people who play StarCraft, people who play, you know, Civilization or, or, or Simulation games. There is a game by Cryptivo Games, uh called Universe Sim. Universe Sim is the god game. Ever co if you've ever had a concept of a god game, or if you've ever played something like Bla uh, Beyond Black and White or something like that, or a god game, it it's always fallen short. There's always been limitations, or they've gotten it right, but it's never been really interesting for too long. This game, dear fucking, I, you gotta post this, dude, and you actually have to post this because you gotta take a look at the video. Well, we'll take a look at the video after the, uh, once we, uh, I get through this and we finish the episode, but this game is going to change your concept of what a game is. This is fucking mind-blowing shit. When you it's thought that challenge you could... conventions, blah 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 blah. No 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 no. I'm saying this. They're not. They're just saying it's going to be a very nice civilization. This shit that they're pulling off here is something that you've seen pieces of it in every other game. This is the only time I've ever seen it put it all together. Uh, you have dedicated planets. Uh, you have progressively uh, more complex system. On top of which, uh, you have a progression system for your civilization, which is going to be human, of course, that is randomized or, or progressional depending on your situation, depending on the type of planet you start on, blah, blah, blah. On top of which, you have an almost infinite amount of outside variables. You have everything from actual fucking you know, nuclear holocaust to a fucking alien invasion with things that are giant ma machines that are the size of planets. Beautifully rendered, and this is still in early alpha, the entire environment, every single bit of the environment is editable. Everything. There is nothing that is solid. There is nothing that is safe. This is just purely like living on a mode of dust on a sunbeam, okay? And that's my reference to uh, Cosmos right there. It's hard to explain beyond that. You just need to watch. And you'll understand why. Hopefully the first game post will be on the uh, first link will be on there. Second one is for anyone who was a fan of Jet Set Radio Future. Or Jet Set. From Sega. 
Yeah. Do you remember it? Yeah, of course. I have uh, both games, actually. Well, check this bitch out. This is a quick video here. It's a game called Hover. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, I did hear about this. It's between Jet Set Radio and Mirror's Edge. And it's... the guy who's uh, composing the music is the same guy who composed music for Damn Jet Set Damn, Skippy. The guy who composed or, or, or set up the soundtrack for Jet Set Radio Future is the same guy he already agreed to do the soundtrack for this game. It is a spiritual successor to Jet Set Radio Future. And fucking the first time I saw this, there were only about 100 backers and they were at $1,000. I just refreshed the page. $74,000. 2,244 backers, and they were only going for a goal of 38,000. So they've already broken through. This thing is going to be made. And they're looking at a Wii U version. That's right, motherfuckers. Yeah. A Wii U version if they hit $100,000. And it seems like they might hit that goal. So Yeah. So get in now with you know $10. What? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do this. Good man. I'm also this actually looks trouble. really interesting. I'm actually really interested in this. Good. Finally, I, I, got, really, I converted someone <laughs> because I really liked uh, Jet Jet Grind Radio and Jet Set Radio Future. I haven't played much of it, but from what I have played, it's awesome. It's like really good and it really sort and of. And the music like, is fucking unbelievable. And the great. Oh, and the best be. thing I mean, of this is this is a non-violent game. I'm only saying this because it is. It blew my mind how, how they came up with this concept. The whole point of the game is to just run. Jump from one building to another, onto moving trains, onto floating cars, because this takes place in a futuristic huh. alien city. And you have a multitude, a very colorful, very interesting backdrop. I love it because it is the spiritual successor to Jet Grind Radio, Jet Set Radio Future, to all of that. In a Mirror's Edge style, it's super beautiful. And the alpha that they showed running, they, these guys know what the fuck they're doing. And on top of which, I'm not a Wii U fan, but if they're willing to fucking throw this, throw this to a console, who fucking knows what else they're going to probably try to do with something like this. This is a new IP that has, like, the sky's the limit on this one. Yeah, so, this looks really interesting. So check those two out. Now, I got nothing left except you and your Mario Kart 8 Wii U bundle. News. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, Nintendo released some more information regarding, regarding Mario Kart Wii. I'm oh, sorry, Mario Kart 8. Sorry, wrong game. Um, mainly like new characters and new items, so like that. But the big, big news was that they're coming out with a Mario Kart 8 Wii U bundle for three hundred and twenty nine ninety nine. Three hundred ninety nine. Three hundred twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> it comes with the game. It comes with a Wii remote and a Mario Wii remote and a Wii wheel. Now for the big question that all our fans are going to be asking. Why should I care? Because Mario Kart 8 looks awesome. Yeah, you can tell us with that. It, I, it I, looks... Honestly, I will have no social life, you know, <laughs> after getting this game. Yeah, I it, don't it, understand your guys' have... obsession with this game. I don't. Dude, have you seen okay, the look, videos? I will of bring it? my Wii U over to your place. We will I've sit seen, you in front of it, and you. Will I've play. seen this game. I don't find it fucking interesting. A bunch okay. of cartoon characters okay. running into each other in the fucking tiny carts, dude. They've done this eight times. But you they know have how not done, they've it done it in eight HD. times. <laughs> you know how I know they've done it eight times? There's a fucking number eight behind it, right there. Looking uh, at, I'm pressing it on my screen. Well, technically. <laughs> Oh, that's the eight official ones. That's not counting every other fucking handheld. Every other fucking version of the system. Actually, I think it is. I think it is including all handhelds and console versions. But no, so it's, it, but it's not in it's not uh, counting the um, the arcade edition. Oh yeah, no, 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 it's not counting that. Either way, there's been a but, lot of them before. <laughs> but what's also interesting is if you register the game on Club Nintendo before July 31st, you will receive a free eShop download for one of four games. That includes New Super Mario Bros. U, Pikmin 3, The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, or Wii Party U. And guess what? I own three of the four, so my only freebie is a shit game that I don't want. What's that? Want. Wii U Party <laughs> Well, you know what? Europe, they get a better deal. No because shit. They, Europe gets everything. Because they get no. four extra... Because on top of the four games we're getting, they get four extra ones. Only Nintendo. Uh, now, they get it's... Sonic Lost World. They get Sonic and Mario. Oh, uh, wow. Sonic. Mario... No. <laughs> uh, Monster Hunter 3. And I forgot the third one. Shit. Let me go. No. Uh, no, wait. That's the wrong one. Shit. Wait, well, well, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, 
Fuck, where is it? God damn it. <laughs> Andy, uh, you know, like... Uh, oh, wait, yeah, yeah. Okay, Sonic Lost World, Son Mar Sonic and Mario at the Olympics, Wii U Party, Wonderful 101, that was the other one, and Monster Hunter 3. See, I would have had, uh, you know, Wonderful 101. You'd probably like it. It's pretty interesting. It's I a want it pretty for good free. game. You could borrow it from me if you want. Yeah, for free. I have it. I've, I haven't finished it, but from what I did play, it's very We're good. We're going to be wrapping up this episode with yeah. a final note. Did you know that Google Glass parts make up 5.3% of its price tag? Yep. It only really? costs them $100 to make it, yet they're charging 1500 bucks to buy one. And I can explain why. So. Why? I don't know. Are you guys going to keep going, or do you want me to explain? Or no, what's explain going? it. I was going to say it's the it's the the Steve Jobs principle. You Actually, sell it no. To... no, no, no. You're right to think that, and that's what I first thought too. But the thing is, is that the Steve Jobs principle only works on hardware that doesn't fucking work, or, <laughs> but looks pretty. And what we've already seen is that this thing doesn't look pretty. It's not meant to look pretty. It's just meant to work. Now, understand when Google tries to come up with a product. The only other product besides Google Glass that we've seen that Google actively go behind, and you can't say Chromebooks because that's a third-party thing. They just provide the software. Chromebooks are shit. They're not, dude. They're actually pretty good. I mean, they're not, they're not going to be replacing, you know, tablets and shit like that. They're good for work. And I used one at work, and I still kind of miss it. It's still pretty good. But you just, it's something you have to try. That's besides the point. You missed it I'm, after you tossed it in the trash. No, dude, there was, it was the companies. Anyway, uh, going off the rails here. Uh, the main thing is, the reason why it's so expensive is because each and every single one of these has been manufactured like by hand. These things were like made as prototypes. They weren't made as final. And so when it comes to fashioning or, or manufacturing anything as a prototype, it always costs four to five times more than it does mass manufacturing once you've gotten all the parts down, once you've gotten all this shit is fucking like a specific individual parts that are not done in mass. These are all individually made. That still doesn't account for the price point though. The price point works as a limiter to how many people are going to access it first. Why? Google doesn't want the average Joe to touch it first. Why? Because the average Joe doesn't fucking know how to use it. They don't the even know how to use Windows. The Explorer cases or the Explorer systems were built specifically for the people with enough disposable income to be able to buy something that's fifteen hundred dollars which means that they already come with the intellectual and technical prowess to actually use it correctly no because not all you have you have poor, like stupid money inheritance and stuff of course but then the inheritance has to hear it from somewhere and they have to make money off this venture somehow in order to be able to uh, they've already broken out the parts from the original explorer version that came out two years ago and they found that in retail, most likely what the price is going to be is between 200 to 300 dollars. Everyone is in agreement with this, and fucking unofficially, Google's kind of in agreement with this as well. They put it at a 1500 dollars because they want to make sure that they're able to cut off the type of people that can get it because they need developers more than anything to be interested in this before they sell it to the mass public. They're trying to avoid the Windows debacle, and they've always done this. Have you ever the, the Netsys products, the phones and the tablets, when they first came out? They were priced completely ridiculously. The only ones that have been priced rationally have been the Nexus, uh, what was it? the Nexus Five, the and the four Nexus and you know, but the Nexus Four was pretty reasonable. The Nexus Four was also the, one of the first ones that was reasonable, only because they wanted to actually make money off it. But the original, the original Nexus, the original one, the Google Nexus, yeah, fucking ridiculously overpriced piece of crap compared to what we have today. But at the time, it was fucking, you know, stable, bleeding edge. And that's what they do. You cull the herd. You only allow a certain, very a-specific group with the type of income and the type of technical prowess that you want, even if that includes stupid rich people, because stupid rich people are still going to fucking buy it anyway. You're still making money. True. If they can make money off of this initial launch, then what was it? Uh, earlier this month, they had a single day on April 15th that anyone could buy it for a single day. They need to create an artificial demand in order to avoid having to pass the hurdles of the Steve Jobs principle. Mm. Google is not sexy. Google is not hip. No, Google's pretty sexy. I have to say that the latest version of Android is just Yeah, the latest version beautiful. of Android is fucking sexy, but their stuff, it, the hardware, well, and the no. vision the public has. 
Well, what about the yeah. Nexus 5? That's a nice phone. Uh, it's not the most pretty of phones. I still say the HTC One Screw is better you. looking. My Nexus Five is fucking. Fuck beautiful. your Nexus I'm Five, okay? It. It's a drag queen at a Miss USA pageant, okay? Whoa there! <laughs> Let's not jump into that hole, shall we? No. This phone is fucking kick ass, and the only reason you're pissed off about it is because you're sticking to that other phone, and you still can't get a Nexus Five, huh? Mm. I could if I want, but I have an HTC One, which I converted to a Google Play and edition. And the only reason this man has an HTC One is. Because I switched to T-Mobile? No, no, no. Say it. Say it. Say what? Because I converted it to Google Play Edition? There you go. What you would have gotten straight out of the box with an Nexus 5, he got it on a phone with a pretty No, but you could if you bought the Google Play Edition. The Google Play Edition is basically just a ROM. That's no it. shit. I know, but, that, but what I'm trying to say is Android would be... I think... Google would be doing the better masses a, a favor if they would just require... You know OEMs to just use stock Androids interface, but they don't believe in OEMs. Uh, OEMs suck ass. Okay. They Worst don't. Want, they're is the ones, Samsung. They're the Worst first defender. ones that are always jumping around saying free and open source, and that's the other reason why they've because you can't tell developers no, I don't want you to no. They want actual developers who will be doing stuff. So if you have someone spending fifteen hundred dollars to buy a piece of hardware that is in a testing phase, you know. That because they spent that much amount of money, they actually mean business. They mean to make that money back somehow. That way, they already have an initial slush fund that they could throw at the product for any other use, whether it be for, for what is it, uh, putting it on television, whatever, or, or trying to get more people to buy it. It's costing more now because they're trying to make it as cheap as possible later on. If you do all the testing with a large group of people and limit that by putting a high price tag, the end result is going to be a very affordable piece of technology, which is hardy, which actually works and has already survived in the wild. That's why, as much as I love Google Glass and you know all VR, uh, what is it, augmented reality uh, hardware, I'm gonna wait for the finished version because right now it's very limited. There's not much you can do with it. The hardware can do a whole bunch of stuff, but it's limited in software because they don't know what the fuck we're gonna be using it for. Well, but the Android Wear is gonna be fucking amazing. And what about that? that? Day one, I'm buying that thing. Day one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm going to wait for a Google version. Because the first, uh, that's not Google. That's no, that is. It's that. Moto uh, 360. Uh, dude, anything Motorola, I'm sorry. I don't care if they're bought. No, but. the Moto 360 is a beautiful watch. Mm, please. Oh, All right, let's wrap I up just, this episode, by the yeah, way, because yeah, this has been a long episode. Yes, yes, it has. Let's end it. Yes. Say it. Platypus, everyone. There you go.